Well, welcome back. Um, I guess this would be more of a vlog type thing. Um, just talk about little this and that, you know. Um, first let me start out with showing, I guess, a little quick update of my little patio garden, porch potted garden thingy. <laughs> so, this is what they look like. Um, ignore the Slim Jim wrapper. The mister had Slim Jim and apparently he did not make it to the trash can. So I'm going to have to take care of that, you know, as usual. But, yeah, they're starting to grow. This is, um, this pot is actually t tomatoes. So it's starting to sprout. Um, I planted it about two weeks ago, maybe. Um, here's the lemon balm still. I'm still debating if I want to plant the other pack of seeds that I have. But, I don't know if I can kind of, there we go. See, it's still kind of growing. There's new leaves starting to form. The salad mix here is really starting to, I'm actually going to change pots here soon. Um, with a bigger pot or something like that. So you see the hot peppers are, you know, the hot peppers aren't doing too bad. The only ones that still don't seem to be doing much of anything is the lavender here. But I also remember last year when I started to grow lavender, so it was the hardest thing for me to grow as well. Um, and the chamomile is not doing anything either. Maybe I'll take them inside for a while. I don't know. The sage is actually starting to sprout. <laughs> which are these little pots right here. So that started sprouting. Uh, I'm not sage, basil. Mm -hmm. The basil. She don't have any sage. And the echinacea is still going. Um, the marigold, no that's hot peppers. Where was the marigold? So this is the marigolds. This is really taking nice. And then here, is the other peppers. These are like uh, sweet peppers. And then uh, as we go up here, so you can see this is the strawberry plant. It's actually starting to bear fruit. Um, more flowers have been sprouting up on it. So we got that and another little, another little one. It's the wrong one. <laughs> another little one starting to grow in. You can see that. So not doing too bad and then some of these other are potted plants so um I wanted to talk about what is it baby yeah you leave the squirrel she's just I don't know if you can see her but she's just um, playing there she loves that tree. She hugs this tree all the time. So she wanted to sit over there. <laughs> she wanted to sit over by the tree. Um, she hasn't been feeling well. We, uh, She's been... She had a fever and everything. So she started to do a lot better. So I asked her if she wanted to come help me water the plants. So she loves watering the plants. And she wanted to stay out for a little while. So... Well, I figured let her get some fresh air. Um, but she's definitely a creature of nature. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to talk about a few things, I guess. But now that I actually have the video going, I have no idea where I want to start or what I <laughs> want to say. I was sitting out here like, oh, this is a nice day. And, you know, it would be good to do a video outside. And, I had some ideas, and then by the time I got everything situated, I kind of just <laughs> lost my thought. But, um, I wanted to talk about, well, let's start off with, um, growing. Um, we all spend our entire lives growing. Growing isn't just you know, moving from your different stages of life, like uh, infancy and 
childhood to young adult, adult and then to your maturity. But we all grow mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And I'll probably be cutting this short because um, I don't want to keep her outside too long. But over the course of time that I've been on YouTube, I like to feel that I have grown a lot in how I think about things, how I perceive things, um, especially with my spirituality. Certain things that I felt were not so important, um, I have found uh, that I, I, I've begun to think they are important. You know, um, like certain aspects of certain things in Wicca that I've always put off studying, that I felt, you know, uh, I like new basic whatever about it. How you feeling, baby? Hmm? Do you want to go back inside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Certain uh, important elements that at the time I didn't think were so important. Okay. Well, why don't you go get your crayons and paper and you can make a picture. Okay. Okay. Well, you get the paper. I will get the crayons. Well, your paper is on the table, so you go get wow, the... Wow, there's a bumblebee buzzing. That's not a bumblebee. A fly that buzz you. Yeah. Go get your paper. It's on the table in the living room. And then go... don't like me. <laughs> don't like you either. Yeah. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> Um, like certain elements that I thought, you know, watch your fingers, baby. Move the door open. There you go. <laughs> um, like certain things, like, I only knew, learned the basics of them. I really didn't feel the need to go in depth into certain things, like, let's say, the watchtowers. I know of their importance, and I know, you know, enough about them. But there are certain things that I've come to realize that I want to know the why of it. Like, why do we call the watchtowers? Or, um, why do we use the elements? You know, I mean, it's enough to know that you use the elements in your practice. You call the watchtowers, you cast your circle, um, and then those who work with the ancestors, you know, but I want to know why. Why is that important? How did that come to be in the path and so on and so forth? And um, I feel that, oh, gosh, there's a wasp in that can bin. <laughs> Um, I feel that these things are important to know. I feel that it's important to understand what led up to these practices being put into place. Like, there's certain things in, in Catholicism. Growing up Catholic, you know, I went to Catholic school for the first eight years. And so there are certain things that you know why certain things are practiced. Certain things in the Catholic Mass, you know why that's there because you're taught that. Whereas here with Wicca, I didn't have a teacher per se, you know. Um, I have attended Grove classes um, here and there and I have read a lot of books, but mainly the books I've read are one-on-one books. Uh, I have tried to delve a little deeper as of late. I think I've mentioned in several videos um, certain books that I've bought trying to delve deeper. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. It'll fly on. Okay. You be careful with those bees, baby.
Okay, why don't you go sit over there and, and color drawer. So, uh, like recently, just a, a week or so ago, I bought a book by, um, by, um, Doreen Valente. Um, I think it's Witchcraft Tomorrow. Witchcraft of Tomorrow. So I'm going to start reading that. And I do intend to buy um, two books by Gerald Gardner at some point as well. Um, but I think, and I do have a book that I bought a while ago. I forget what it was called. Modern Wicca, The History of Modern Witchcraft or something. I can't remember what it was called. But I did it in one of my haul videos, so... If you watched all my videos, I'm sure you've seen it. Um, but I want to read that as well. I want a deeper understanding of my path. I understand and I know that this is um, a path that's right for me, but I want a better and deeper understanding of what it's all about. And I feel that's very important. I feel that it's important to make that connection. Um, I've been seeing... And this is something that um, another YouTuber brought up. Um, I think it's Balanced Witchcraft. I think it's her channel. It's a new channel she had just started. She has decided to um, start back on her Wiccan path. And so she's doing, I think she's doing a year and a day. I'm not sure. Um, but she's chronicling each day. Um, not all the days pertain to what she's learning about the path. Some of it is just also like her everyday life. But then you can always argue that your everyday life. You live your path, you know. So everything you do um, has that spirituality in it or your spirituality affects what you do or what you do uh, your everyday mundane stuff can affect your spirituality so like you can always make that argument but anyways she had brought up the importance of knowing like the forefathers of your faith um, I've seen quite a few videos about Wicca and about witchcraft I've seen a lot of videos arguing the difference between witchcraft and Wicca. I've seen videos that argues that they are synonymous. I've seen um, some people question um, the the. I see some that say Wicca is an ancient religion. Then there are those that says it's not an ancient religion. It's um, only formed in the 60s you know with Gerald Gardner and some of the early forefathers so you have Gerald Gardner and um, Alex um, Alexander Sanders and um, you have um, even Alistair Crowley who well he wasn't like a founder of Wicca but you know what I mean these works contributed to Wicca or well contributed to witchcraft and things like that that's more, that's different though. Um, Alexander, Alistair Crowley is more ceremonial. Um, uh, th there's obvious differences, um, and he's controversial. I honestly don't know much about him. Um, I do at some point think I probably will do research on him, but as of now, no. I'm not quite interested in learning about him yet. Um, but I think that these things are important. I also think it's important to find connections between Wicca and other faiths. I think a lot of times... How are you feeling, baby? Okay. Okay. Let me know. We're going to go inside in a little while, okay? All right? Okay. Um, I think it's important to also try to make these connections between your current faith and other faiths. Um, I think 
doing that, finding that common ground, that commonality, would go a long way in helping to eliminate a lot of discrimination amongst different faiths because I cannot make the argument that Christians are solely guilty of um, being discriminatory against pagans because I've seen a lot of pagans be discriminatory against Christians and I think what we need to focus on is not so much our differences but our similarities what baby? No. no. Christian is my friend. Oh, you have a friend named Christian? Yeah, he, Christian, is my friend. Okay, baby. Whoa, I get buzzed up. Okay, really buzzed. Okay, well, you be careful. Um. I will get buzzed. I will say that when I first came to Wicca, when I first learned about it, when I first studied it, I wanted to throw everything I knew about Christianity away. I was just so disenfranchised with the faith that I wanted to just separate myself completely and totally. And now I'm at a point where I don't see that as a necessity. I don't see why I should have to do that. Um, do Because I am Wiccan, does that mean that I cannot acknowledge some of the things that I acknowledged as a Christian. Uh, mommy. Let's be careful, baby. Uh. Okay? We're going to go inside in a few minutes anyway, okay? Mm -mm. Alright, why don't you finish drawing? And we'll play with your new Rapunzel and horse. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And why don't you drink some of the juice Daddy gave you? Mm -mm. You don't want it? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see a need to have to have that separation. I still pray, and I know that there are some who are pagan, not just Wiccan, but are pagan, who they don't like the word prayer, um, it seems. They, there are some who, they don't, they don't like that word. I, I don't know if it's because it seems to be synonymous with Christianity, but I pray. <laughs> Um, I pray to Isis, I pray to Ganesh, I do pray to other deities as well. Um, I know when my baby girl is sick, I pray to Isis all the time as a mother goddess. I know that there are those who say you should not, I don't know, I guess beseech the gods per se, that you should be working with the gods, but that's a throwback to my Christian upbringing. Um, I do not view deity the way I used to in that um, they are I don't know how to describe it my view in deity is different than it was when I was a Christian I will say that however I do feel that there are times when yes you do go and you do beseech deity for aid um, I feel Prayer and spell work are very similar. Um, there are some differences, but... And I had this conversation with a friend of mine on Facebook. Um, who... Sh she had asked me... Well, no. She had asked on her Facebook page... if What's the difference between prayer and, and a spell? And I gave her my opinion. and um, Basically, I view them to be very similar. There are some differences, but overall, your purpose is pretty much the same for a spell worker for a prayer. Um, even some prayer is simple, simi not simple, similar to a spell. You know, where a prayer you'll light a candle. When we went, when I went to church, if someone was sick or what have you, and I was looking for the aid of God. I would light a candle, I would kneel before that candle, and I would give up a prayer. Um, some of the things you might do a little differently, like I might... What is it, baby? You want to hug the tree? Well, we already planted everything. There's nothing else to plant. If we get more flowers to plant, baby, you can plant them, okay? She helped us plant some of the flowers in the garden. <laughs> she loves that. 
um, like now, if I pray, I'm, I will also most likely offer up some kind of thank you. Well, I always gave a thank you. Okay, well, we're about to go inside, okay? All right, and then you can watch your DVD that has T Mumi Zumi and Bubble Guppies on it. Okay. Dora. And Dora. That Dora's on there too. So let me. And Piggy has Piggy on it. Okay. So, um, like now I might give an offering to Isis as a thank you, as opposed to just my heartfelt thanks. I do that too, but I also do like to give an offering to Isis or to Ganesh or to whoever I am beseeching. I'm going to say beseeching. I'm sure some people won't like that word, but that's how I see it. I am beseeching their aid. I'm looking for their aid. So I think, so what I want to say is that growth, especially spiritual growth, I think it's more of a beginning to open up to other things beginning to explore deeper into what we believe but at the same time begin to explore what is outside of our belief some some of the similarities in other faiths um, that's similar to our faith I don't feel I feel it's very dangerous to close oneself off to other paths or to close oneself off to other religions I feel that we need to understand them um, other religions also to understand other people you know understanding Catholicism might help one to understand why some in the Catholic faith have that prejudice against pagans or against homosexuals or you know things like that that's not the be-all and end-all reason as to why they might have that prejudice but I just feel I feel that we need to, in order to grow, we need to understand more of what's happening around us. Um, I I see a lot of people clash sometimes over things that I, I personally, outside of the situation, because I, I don't know everything, but outside of the situation, I feel could have been rectified, um, could have been resolved if people were more open to the person they were clashing with trying to understand what is happening so that you can better understand how to work things out. Um, I feel it's important to reach outside of ourselves. You know, we always talk about going in, introspection and things, and that's very important, but I also think that reaching outside of ourselves is also important. Um, I don't know. I think to me in my head, listening to myself speak, I sound like, I feel like I'm babbling. I'm going to post this anyway. So if I'm babbling, I'm sorry. Oh, baby, you missed the hawk flying overhead. Sweetie? It was a hawk flying. Oh, okay, we're about to go in now. Um, so I yeah, that's it. If this was a whole big, oh my gosh, 23 minutes of babbling, I am so sorry. And if you stayed through it, you're amazing. <laughs> so... Um, I just want to say thank you for watching and blessed be. Okay. Sorry for the hand.